mga kaibigan noong nakaraang resupply mission ng Philippine Coast Guard at Armed Forces of the Philippines patungo sa Ayungin Shoal para maghatid ng supply sa mga sundalo na nakaestasyon sa BRP Sierra Madre na kung saan hindi natuloy ang bangkang sinasakyan ng sundalo dahil nasira ang bangkang sinasakyan ng supply at nasugatan ang tauhan ng Armed Forces of the Philippines dahil sa pag-water cannon ng Chinese Coast Guard na nagresulta sa pagkapinsala sa bangkang sinasakyang ng supply maraming Pilipino ang nagalit sa pangyayaring ito. Pero alam ko masasayahan kayo sa ibabalita ko sa inyo dahil ang China Coast Guard Ship na may hull number 4103 ay naglabas ng larawan na nagpapakita ng mga butas sa katawan nito sa ibabaw ng waterline matapos hindi sinasadyang mabanggaan ang barko ng Philippine Coast Guard na gawa sa Japanese na Parola class na 44 meter lang ang haba na may 320 tons na bigat na isang multirole response cutter na tinatawag nating BRP Cobra, MRRV4409, Ito ay nangyari noong ikadalawamputpito ng Marso taong dalawanglibot dalawamputapat kasabay ang huling resupply mission patungo sa Ayungin Shoal. Ang China Coast Guard vessel ay may haba na 90 meters at may bigat na 1,500 tons na may hull number na 4103 na dating Type 056 Corvette ng People's Liberation Army Navy pero ito ay inilipat sa China Coast Guard pagkatapos matanggap ng People's Liberation Army Navy ang mas advanced na Type 056A na variant. Pero inaasahan na ang kalidad ng pagbuo ng katawan ng barko sa Type 056 ay kapareho ng makikita sa Type 056A ng People Liberation Army Navy, na may kaparehong disenyo at materyales ng katawan ng barko, sa ngayon ay wala pang kumpirmadong pinsala sa katawan ng barko sa BRP cover ng Philippine Coast Guard. Nakakagulat dahil ang barko ng PCG ay may bigat lamang na 320 tons samantala ang Chinese Coast Guard vessel ay may bigat na 1,500 tons limang beses na mas mabigat ang barko ng China masasabi sa pangyayari ito, na hindi talaga dekalidad ang gawang China kahit barko pa nila. Ating panuulin ang video sa Trilateral Summit na naganap sa Amerika na kung saan sinabihan si Pangulong Marcos Jr. ni President Biden na ang Pilipinas at Amerika ay tunay na alyansa, na ibig sabihin kung atakihin ng China ang Pilipinas ay hindi magdadalawang isip na tulungan ang Pilipinas na depensahan, narito ang pahayag ni U.S. President Biden. Today, uh, we mark a historic moment. The first ever leaders summit between the United States, Japan, and the Philippines. And it's truly an honor to have you both here as we begin this new era of a partnership. As you've heard me say before, a great deal of history in our world will be written in the Indo-Pacific over the coming years. And the three, um, as the three allies, three steadfast partners, and three proud democracies representing a half a billion people, and today we commit to writing that story in the future together. To building the Indo-Pacific that is free, open, prosperous, and secure for all. This afternoon, we'll discuss a few key areas where our nations are deepening ties. First, technology and clean energy for securing our semiconductor supply chain, from securing our semiconductor supply chain to expanding trusted telecommunications in the Philippines, to building clean energy workforce, to expanding our cooperation across the entire board. Second, we are deepening our maritime and security ties. This is something I know you've discussed with Vice President Harris during her travel to the Indo-Pacific. And I want to be clear, the United States, the United States defense commitments to Japan and to the Philippines are ironclad. They're ironclad. As I said before, any attack on Philippine aircraft, vessels, or armed forces in the South China Sea would invoke our mutual defense treaty. Finally, I'm proud to announce we're launching an economic corridor in the Philippines as part of the G7's Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment. This is the first corridor in the Indo-Pacific. It means more jobs for people across the entire region. It means more investment in sectors critical to our future, clean energy, ports, railroads, agriculture, and much more. I'm looking forward to discussing all this with all of you. But first, Mr. President, I'm going to hand it over to you, President Marcos. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, 
And uh, once again, uh, allow me to uh, thank you for hosting us, uh, uh, Prime Minister Kishida and myself, uh, in the White House for this uh, very important agreement, which uh, we are going to formalize today. We meet today as friends and partners bound by a shared vision and pursuit of a peaceful, stable, and prosperous Indo-Pacific. It is a partnership born not out of convenience nor of expediency, but as a natural progression of a deepening relation and robust cooperation amongst our three countries. Linked by a profound respect for democracy, good governance, and the rule of law. Today's historic summit is a culmination of several preparatory engagements between our foreign ministries, our national security advisors, and our vice ministers, as well as the conduct of trilateral maritime exercises and joint development cooperation. But this meeting can be just a beginning. Facing the complex challenges of our time requires concert concerted efforts on everyone's part a dedication to a common purpose, and an unwavering commitment to the rules-based international order. This is a meeting that looks ahead. As we deepen our ties and enhance our coordination, we seek to identify ways of growing our economies and making them more resilient, climate-proofing our, our cities and our societies, sustaining our development progress, and forging a peaceful world, world for the next generation. Today's summit is an opportunity to define the future that we want and how we intend to achieve it together. Thank you, and I wish us all a successful meeting.